Good morning, New Beginnings family. Joel here. Um, we're going to be starting our third devotion, morning devotional, and I'm really excited um, to get a little bit more into the book of John. So if you were with us yesterday, um, we went through John chapter 4, the woman at the well. We pulled out a few key concepts. Um, and we asked ourselves the question um, about if there's any wells that we tend to draw from uh, in our own lives that aren't the living water that Jesus provides. Um, and so I hope that uh, kind of stuck with you through the day. I know it did for me. Um, today I'd like to flip a few pages and go over to the feeding of the 5,000 in John chapter 6. So again, I'm just going to read a little bit. We'll pull it out. We'll ask ourselves some questions. So starting in verse 1, it says, After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the Feast of the Jews, was near. Therefore Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these may eat? This he was saying to test them, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them. For everyone to receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for so many people? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. Jesus then took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to those who were seated. Likewise also of the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were filled, he said to the disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments so that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Therefore, when the people saw the sign which he had performed, they said, This is truly the prophet who has come into the world. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with that passage, most of you. Um, one of the many miracles of Jesus. Um, and oftentimes when I go through the scriptures with the kids, I, I like to um, talk about how a lot of the, the physical things that happen in scripture, right, aren't only like a history or a retelling of something that actually happened. They are very much that. Um, but they also carry behind it like a spiritual message. Um, and so this, when I read this story, it always convicts me a lot because I always see myself as a disciple, right? And, and so what the disciples are doing, right? Everyone's gathered, everyone's hungry, um, and the disciples are focused on what they don't have, right? And in my life, it can be really, it's just our human nature, right? It can be really easy to focus on what you don't have instead of what you do have. And this can be material, right? So it can, I can be talking about things, um, but I can also be talking about like mental faculties, like uh, spiritual gifts even. Um, we can be more focused on what we, we don't have or what we think we don't have, instead of focusing on what we do have. So you, you, this, is, this is gonna be a lot about gratitude, right? And I'm sure you guys have heard the saying, the grass is greener on the other side, right? And that, that is true, like, that is true um, in our, our nature. We're always looking for something new, 
right? It, and it never satisfies. When we get the new thing, we're just looking for another new thing. Um, so I've heard it said a lot, and I, I like this, the grass isn't greener on the other side, it's greener where you water it, and that's true too. Um, but what I'd like to throw out is the grass is greener on the other side, sure, but it's greener where you're standing, you're just not looking there, right? And so here we have the disciples, really relatable, who are just focused on what they don't have. Um, and then in comes a kid, right? A child. And, and what the child does is he's focused on what he does have, what he can give, right? And he's willing to give it. Um, and we see that just as a principle, right, this is the principle I think that this story is trying to portray, or one of the many, is that when you're focused on what you do have, right, and you offer that to Jesus willingly, even if it's just a small amount, right, that gets multiplied, right? And not only do the blessings go to you, but the blessings go to everyone else, right? Um, so the point that I want to make is that often we can be people who look at what we don't have, but if we start to look at what we do have, right, materially, but also look at what we do have spiritually, right, the gifts that we've been given, right, and we say, God, uh, you know, you gave me this love for crafts, right, or fill in the blank. And I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to start a, a group, you know, uh, at church doing this. Whatever your gift is, whatever your talent is, um, if we give the, the gifts that we've been given from God back to God to use for his glory, he multiplies them and blesses others, right? So the questions I want to ask is... Um, what is the grass that I'm standing on that I haven't been paying at attention to, right? What are the things in my life that I take for granted, right? I'm too busy looking off in the other field that I don't see the blessings in my life that are there already. And B, what are the, the things, the gifts that God has given me that I could give back and that could be used to bless other people? So with that, let's pray. Um. Dear God, thank you for another day, Lord. Um, thank you for giving us gifts, Lord. Thank you for giving us things. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for all that you provide for us. Um, and help us to be grateful people, Lord. Uh, Help us to know that every good and perfect thing comes from you, Lord. And that if we don't have something, it's because you don't want us to have it right now. Um, I pray that you would just work in my heart to be a more grateful person. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.